this is the theme when you go on TV. You are the spoiler candidate. When you're not on TV, uh, a case study QB is so gracious to look through all this cable news nonsense and p- extract a lot of clips where they're talking about you. There is a great fear of you. But let's talk about this th- the issue of spoiler and how they're trying to present you as spoiler. There's a lot of reasons that doesn't make sense. You've mentioned a lot of them that one of which is that the people who would vote for Jill Stein would not turn around and vote for Hillary Clinton. The people that would vote for a Dr. Cornell West on the Green Party ticket is not going to turn around and, and vote for uh, Joe Biden. You're looking at three of them right here. Um, but the, but let's drill in on that. And it's my belief this Trump is bad is is not going to work because it's not effective because we have lived through both a Trump presidency and a Biden presidency. And, you know, it's my opinion that a Biden presidency, you can argue, is measurably worse because you have more competency at that is at the controls of the imperialist power of the imperialist empire. Whereas you had Donald Trump, you had a bunch of people not even uh, uh, approved through the Senate to even be heads of of, of, of different uh, departments. So you have incompetency versus competency as far as the people that they uh, uh, put behind them. So they're not going to be able to sell it the same way. And I think that's the reason why there's such a fear of your candidacy specifically. And if you could speak to um, this idea of you being a spoiler versus uh, uh, people be- sort of living through both sort of candidacy, like it is it is a argument to me that is just no longer effective. So could you speak to that or any, any portion of that? Mm-hmm. No, but I mean, you've noted first the points about uh, you know, two thirds of the folk voting uh, Green Party would not vote ever for two party. And uh, some of them may vote even libertarian. They don't necessarily even go to the main two if they voted at all. Uh, and then, of course, the fact that, you know, the idea that a vote is private property, you own somebody's plantation, and that if you don't vote for them, somehow you take the blame as opposed to them presenting a program speaking to the issues that affect you such that they convince you so they can just do anything take no responsibility no accountability whatsoever you can have the most milk toast mediocre ca- candidate like hillary and and, and and biden and so forth and they take no responsibility no socratic energy no self-critical engagement whatsoever but on the other level, though, the deeper level that you're talking about, though, I think it also has to do with the fact that they are afraid that they are being exposed for their hollowness in terms of how the two party system mm. is so thoroughly corrupt and tied to big money and how their politicians are so cowardly and conformist. And more and more people are seeing it. They've been able to hide it for so long. Mm. But more and more people, and when it comes to your generation, oh, no. Because you keep in mind, you know, if, if the only American citizens who could vote uh, were under 30, Bernie would have won probably two terms. Yeah. Because yeah. the younger generation has already been able to see through a lot of the hypocrisy, you see. But now when you get more and more black folk, brown folk, and serious left-wing trade unionists, and serious focal critical of patriarchy and transphobia and homophobia, and then a possible solidarity across the board. You either get backlash, massive repression, character assassination or literal assassination, or you get upheaval. And those threats are real. Those threats are real. The threats to the status quo are very real. And so they see me as, I think, in some ways, I'm like a canary in the in the mine. You know, I'm just this one little boat. I mean, you know, I, I come home reading and nine interviews and trying to listen to a little Donnie Hathaway, and I come up, one man determines the next election. Who's that one man? My mama's child, me? What are they talking about? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what kind of paranoia and what are we talking about? Not at all. 
wow. just a little small wave in a great ocean of a great people with a great tradition and some of some of us worship a great god but we still connected to great figures and so all of that, that we talked about before that's flowing through that's what's coming at them you see and when you, that's coming at them you got an unstoppable spirit they can't crush you you ain't scared you're not intimidated you're not afraid you ain't mm -hmm. laughing when it ain't funny and scratching when it don't itch no you a free man free black man and that kind of freedom can be contagious so it's never isolated individual they, they, they didn't treat nat turner this way and i'm no nat turner don't get me wrong but they didn't treat nat turner that way because he was an individual they wanted to make him an example to the other folk. Don't you get that kind of spirit? Mm -mm. Everybody won't leave the plantation. What happens to the plantation? Everybody leave. Well, we know what happens when 2,000 black men left the plantation and joined the Union Army, right? The boys call that a general strike in Black Reconstruction. It's classic in 1935. There was a general strike that shut down the whole plantation system. Then they joined the Army. The Union Army is losing, and they break the back of the Confederate Army. Yes, that's free black men right there. You set that kind of thing loose. Next thing you know, you're going to have fundamental change the revolution. Ooh, Lord have mercy. And they can't string up all of us. Mm -mm. They can't kill all of us all at the same time. Some of us might have to die. All of us going to die anyway. So you might as well use your death for something bigger than you. But the thing is, they can't kill everybody. Now if you got the right spirit, no way. Mm-mm. And that's what we always speak about revolution. They they can't they can't lock us all up. They can't do all these things to all of us. But let's I'm, end this with go go ahead, Ron. Oh, I was about to say I like to say, you know, revolutionaries never die. This is why we uh, do what we do today. This is why we, you know, live off of their words and their uh, prophecies. They they never die. They just got their bodies taken away from them. But they still that's exactly right. That's so yes. true, my brother. This is That's why so we true. this is why we reach Never back die, to their wisdom. Multiply. 